I'm blueprinting the ride pads on my UL19 because these same max amp lipos I got for my 33, I can run in this. So I'm going to revisit this boat next year, and I thought I'd get it ready to get the best result possible. I'll share with you how I'm doing this, and I'm not the expert on it, and I'm not arguing with how anybody else is doing it. You judge for yourself. That's what I do when I watch a video. Does it make sense? And what are the results? You, you got to kind of filter things a bit on uh, the internet. I'm sanding dry. You could do wet, but what I do is I have a brass brush. I sand dry and I keep my paper clean with the brass brush. If the paint galls up on the paper, then it's going to put gouges in the surface. I started off checking with a straight edge both ways, lengthwise and across. And also, before I started, I checked it. So, blueprinted it with this in the sense of how good was it from the factory. I'll show you the numbers. And just like my RSX 380, there are numbers in here in Provost Design, and I don't want to change them. I believe you can get better results on a saw run and also keep your turning, how it, how it does running laps. Keep the characteristics, um, the numbers that are in, in the hall for turning laps. Let's take a look at the numbers I'm getting. Here are my setup numbers for leveling the hall in both directions. Here are the numbers on that one square inch on the right sponson. Here are the numbers on the left sponson. I am also checking for twist along the length of each sponson. I am also checking the angle of attack. Here is the right sponson, the inside sponson, and here is the left sponson. At the same time, we can come back to the strut and check our angle on the strut, our true angle in relation to the numbers on the hall. So here I have, I'm raising it to show you, I have a slight positive angle of attack. Now let's talk about that information and what does it mean. I'm just sharing or passing on what I learned and it's from Mike from ML Boatworks. He's wrote extensively on the Offshore Electrics forum about the numbers he designs in his riggers and what do they do. Picture this the other way with me. This is your inside sponson. So the, turning to the right, he says that sponson is going to tend to drop into the turn more than this sponson, the outside sponson, left sponson. So he designs in more angle attack, three and a half degrees on this one, three degrees on this one. I see the same thing in Pro Boats numbers. Also, this sponson was zero, that's your inside sponson, and this sponson has it's basically a bit of a non trip surface, one and a half degrees. So this sponson's over here. So going around a turn, it won't catch as much when the boat's sliding a bit in a turn. 
I'm not changing those numbers. And in my mind, it's not going to affect the saw run. I guess you could blueprint a rigger or a hydro strictly for a saw run and maybe make them the same. But in a straight line with the outside sponson, so your left sponson with it being one and a half degrees, and this will be a level, I don't see it affecting the ride much. So therefore, I'm not going to blueprint my boat just for a saw run, and then it won't have these designed numbers still in it for running laps, making turns. Also doing that, I had to take way less material off of this. I'm not changing Provost numbers. I like seeing those numbers in Provost design. They're to the number using the same numbers that ML Boatworks is using. And also some stuff I've read on riggers and hydros. These are numbers that work. Nobody strays from these numbers Certainly not by much. Okay. How I'm blueprinting these sponsons and what I'm going to do the rest of the way here. Moving forward with this blueprinting job, how did I get here and how am I going to finish this job? These are my only tolls. This is like 220 sandpaper with the brass brush, dry, keeping it clean. And I also like using a straight edge and looking at the light I'm seeing under it. When I get down to where I have witness marks on the paint over the entire surface, I know I'm really close. I can't even pick up light through there. So I'm going to um, mask this off and I have some testers touch up paint. This is the cover for this boat. It's true blue pearl. There's the number. It's got it on eBay. I'm going to paint these maybe two light coats and possibly even do a crosshatch pattern in that painted ride pad surface when I'm done. We'll see. Here are my painted sponsons after two coats of paint. Check them in the light here. Pretty happy with how they turned out. They're flat enough, I may not sand them after the paint cures. Just pull the tape off, it's a little bit tacky still. But you can get even flatter sanding the paint. That I would wet sand. And one more thing, while you have it set up like this, set up your Turn fin, same way. Off the true numbers of the hull. Not, that looks about straight. Use a digital pitch gauge in relation to strut, bottom of the hull, your sponsons, set them turn fins. For curved turn fins, I do it with the boat upright. I go off the top of the turn fin. They are rolled so that the curve is parallel to the top. And if nothing else, if you set it, set it and then make an adjustment, you can move it in tenths of a degree. So you have a reference. If it's not exactly true, the curve part to the top, at least from one run to the other, you can reference how much you're loosen the boat up or um, tightening it up. So you decide what you think of how I'm doing this. 
like I said, for me, there has to be a good result from applying the information. Again, this is not all original information. I read things on forums, um, watch videos, but ultimately my filter is what kind of result I'm getting when I apply the information.